please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Well, isn't this just fantastic? Captain Zog, subdates 230113.7. As we haggle over Exterminatus protocols, I've received reports that a small contingent of TIE fighters has been probing the Arcadia shields. I've told the Arcadia to send fake data taken from a strip club. Hello everyone, welcome to the exhibition of stupid people. Today we're going to start with some gambling before making our way on up in the world to television. Liam Manifold from Staffordshire, an engineer, placed a £10 bet on a series of matches within the World Cup. If he was successful, he was going to buy his dad a mobility scooter, he was going to do some good things for his family with it. He was given odds of 1,495 to 1 after predicting on the 11th of November that Argentina would be crowned the overall winners, Lionel Messi would be named player of the tournament, and France would also make the final. Because Lyon was victorious, he went back to the betting shop, Coral by the way, when he was told the events closely related to each other so the prices offered on them individually could not be included in a multiple bet. The bookmaker then said that they had made a very fair and generous offer for the settlement of the bet. That was £660 as opposed to the near £15,000 he was entitled to for winning. I'm starting to understand why those in charge of your establishments and other betting places get such monstrous salaries when they don't pay out for a bet that was placed. The issue really is that at the time his bet was accepted without any issue. So when Liam was asked about this, he was quoted as saying, I went to cash in the bet and they said it shouldn't have been placed and offered me £660 for it. I've gone through their complaint system, there is no leeway. I've gone to an independent complaints committee and I'm waiting to hear back from them. I've since had different companies contact me saying that if it was their company, they'd pay out. When I placed the bet, the guy behind the counter said it was absolutely fine. Now they're saying it's a related bet. It's now two weeks after the final, at the time of the article being published, and I don't seem to be getting anywhere. If there's an error, it's their fault for accepting the bet. It is very frustrating. Coral's response to this was, these three events are all closely related to each other, so the prices that were offered on them individually can't be included in a multiple bet. If Argentina and France have made the final, then the odds of Argentina winning it are clearly much shorter than they were at the outset. If Argentina then have won the World Cup, the chances of Messi being player of the tournament will be long odds on. So we have settled the bet in the fairest way possible, paying out on the event with the biggest price, an Argentina versus France final at 22 to 1. And then on the basis that that had happened, we applied the price of Argentina winning the final, which was 10-11 before the game, and then on the basis that Argentina had won the cup, we applied an over-generous price on Messi to be player of the tournament at 1-2, as the odds on that happening should Argentina have won the World Cup would have been much shorter. The prices on the slip had been written on by the customer, not the member of staff. We have settled the bet in line with our terms and conditions, and we have made a very fair and generous offer for the settlement of the bet that exceeds what would have been the odds of such an eventuality had the customer asked for rush-specific treble on November 11th. Something Coral mentioned that might be where the bone of contention resides isn't necessarily in the fact they don't recognise the bet itself. It's the accusation that Liam Manifold put the prices on the slip himself. That could be argued by some to be a form of invalidating of the slip. However, as I'm not a betting man, I'm not entirely sure how one does such a thing. I don't know the system or the process, whether he is supposed to put it on there based on what he sees, at the time that is, to then pass it over to someone to pay for. So it is just a bone of contention, a potential one at that. My view on it is, he placed the bet before the World Cup, therefore his bet should stand as it is and you should pay him for what he is owed. But again, Coral, like many other betting outlets, have to maintain those profit margins so they can all rub their lobes or have someone do it for them. Before we continue, I've got two honourable mentions. The first is because of a recent announcement from the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak that education mandates children will be doing compulsory mathematics until they're 18. Here is an image that's apparently worthy of an article that is, ha, complicated mathematics. It's really not. It took me three seconds in my head, it's 24 pounds for God's sake. 
Simon Pegg, an actor, was trending because he put out a rant about it. And I'm going to now mad educationally lecture you, briefly, on why I think it's right children should do mathematics until they're 18. Firstly, because I want them to suffer. And second, the more important one, it's not about doing the mathematics. It's the ability to solve a problem. We as a country have a vast reservoir of creativity, yes. And that'll be part of the future, yes. Unless you're Extinction Rebellion, or Insulate Britain, or any of those other groups, stop oil people, yeah, ruining art. Apparently creativity is not allowed. But we also need people who can think of a better path forward for humanity. Problem solving starts with mathematics. If you can understand something, like a quadratic equation that you'll never use ever, you have the ability to solve problems and understand them. That kind of thinking is very important. If you can't fathom that, it tells me everything about how thick you are. Not understanding the words that comes out of someone's mouth to ask them the right question as a follow-up is really important. It shows how stunted you are if you can't grasp one sentence, one equation, one problem. The second honorable mention comes from Repzilla's Twitter, Creepshow Art Teasing a Return. Included is an image from Cody Rants. Creepshow Art, aka Shannon, has been active on Instagram. She posted a winking smiley face to her notes on Instagram. My view is if she comes back to YouTube, I wish her the best of luck, because it will be an uphill battle for somebody who had it very easy when she got there, and then cut corners and also was found to be a really bad person. To earn and regain the trust, you'd have to do something very unique, very special, because what you did when you responded to that criticism did not help and did not make you look remotely like a good person. It made you look like an absolute cretin. So as I've mentioned Extinction Rebellion, should we talk about them next? The protest group Extinction Rebellion has released a statement with the headline, We Quit. Now I know some of you are on the face of it going to say, wait, they're finally done? We don't have to put up with the hypocrisy anymore? No, 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 it's not actually that at all. It's clickbait. I know, who does that in this day and age? The statement itself reads, When Extinction Rebellion burst onto the scene four years ago, few could have imagined the seismic shift it would bring about in the climate movement, the climate conversation, and the world at large. You're right, because many more people were having corrective eye surgery after rolling their eyeballs too tight. Despite the blaring alarm on the climate and ecological emergency ringing loud and clear, very little has changed. Emissions continue to rise and our planet is dying at an accelerated rate. But the ozone's getting better. Additionally, and I've proven this many times, the country you protest in the most, the United Kingdom, isn't even in the top 20 of the biggest emission generators on the planet. I don't suppose you want to go to South Korea, China, Germany, America, by chance do you? Maybe recreate Tiananmen Square? The root causes? A financial system prioritizing profits over life. A media failing to inform the public and hold power to account. And a reckless government entrenched in corruption and suppressing the right to protest injustice. The current UK government's position is to make sure that certain vital services are not in any way compromised. But I still believe in the right to protest 100% so I don't support the legislation. I know the United States, for a certain reason, did ban certain strikes. The problem with that is I find, especially in my country, if you start banning that, you set a precedent that then could be used in other areas. Profits over life, that's pretty much how financial systems have always operated. A media failing to inform the public, they've been doing that ever since you started, in fact, giving you a platform. Those that criticize are usually those saying, can you get out of the way of the traffic at least so you don't cause congestion and people have to leave their engines running so additional pollution and anger aimed at you? Consider the optics. As we ring in the new year, we make a controversial resolution to temporarily shift away from public disruption as a primary tactic. Thank you. We recognize and celebrate the power of disruption to raise the alarm and believe that constantly evolving tactics is a necessary approach. Have you considered guerrilla tactics? like Americans against Vietnam, it went really well. What's needed now, most, is to disrupt the abuse of power and imbalance to bring about a transition to a fair society that works together to end the fossil fuel era. Our politicians, addicted to greed and bloated on profits, won't do it without pressure. See, there's an issue here. It's the idea that we can, yet, exist away from fossil fuels. We can't. There are a number of reasons why. You could do reductio ad absurdum and say that if we stopped, 
we'd end up going back to a time before internal combustion, which means our enemies would then just seize our land from us and our homes, our freedoms, integrate us into the great motherland, you will. Other reasons include medicine that is produced via those same fossil fuels. We have many issues in place and we're not ready yet to simply turn it all off. We're really not. We can try, but it won't change anything yet. We must be radical in our response to this crisis and determined in our efforts to address the climate and ecological emergency, even if it means taking a different approach than before. In a time when speaking out and taking actions are criminalized, building collective power, strengthening in number and thriving through bridge building is a radical act. Are you going to become politicians by chance? The very power you seek to undermine will be the very power that corrupts you as well. XR is committed to including everyone in this work and leaving no one behind because everyone has a role to play. This year, we prioritize attendance over arrest and relationships over roadblocks as we stand together and become impossible to ignore. The conditions for change in the UK have never been more favorable. It's time to seize the moment. The confluence of multiple crises present us with a unique opportunity to mobilize and move beyond traditional divides. No one can do this alone, and it's the responsibility of all of us, not just one group. It may be uncomfortable or difficult, but the strength of all social, environmental and justice movements lies in working together. As our rights are stripped away, and those speaking out and most at risk are silenced, we must find common ground and unite to survive. This could all be like reduced down to two words. Avengers Assemble. At the bottom, they finish with Choose Your Future, 21st of April and Beyond, the big one, Houses of Parliament, 100,000 people. Are we going to be doing a recreation of the 5th of November by chance? But no getting captured this time. So while they're on hiatus, by all means, burst out the oil drums and start a party. But I keenly await the coverage, from myself of course, of your next shenanigans. I have been waiting for Just Stop Oil to start again, and I had two cats fighting next to me. If you hear hissing, I'm very sorry. So moving on from Tilly and Voodoo having an argument, I want to talk about The Last of Us, a HBO show based on the video games. I'm a little skeptical of this, mostly because I've seen how The Rings of Power went down, because I've seen how Resident Evil went down, all straying from the source material so much so, oh, but copyright, we didn't own the rights to this, being the excuse, so much so, that the shows are shockingly shite. The Last of Us is not off to a good start. Naughty Dog Central had tweeted out, Neil Druckmann confirmed that spores as seen in the games have been removed from the show, with Tyler Preston 20 pointing out, but that's the whole part of the story. And he's right. If you've played the games, you'll know how important they are to the story. The Act Man had tweeted, I remember they said something similar about the Halo TV show, what could possibly go wrong? Being a retweet of The Last of Us's Twitter account, the HBO one anyway, where Bella Ramsey, who plays Ellie in the show, said, I was advised not to play the game, but I watched some of the gameplay though secretly. When one is not familiar, truly familiar and immersed into the source material, one is essentially sheeple. One follows what they are told and doesn't do it right. We can say that The Witcher, to an extent, wasn't too much of a deviation, certainly for the first season, from the source material, the books. However, it did deviate, but you can attribute a lot of it not to Henry Cavill. Jeremy Irons is a fantastic actor. When he portrayed Rodrigo Borgia, he immersed himself in the source material of the Borgia family, how they took over Roma. A Spanish family rising to the top, the incest, everything else. It was a fantastic show, by the way, because it was fundamental that they stayed true to the information available. No revisionist history interpretation, although you could argue it was, history is often biased. The point is, The Last of Us, HBO show, is deviating from the source material. So Neil Druckmann and Craig Mazin want to ground the series in science and make cordyceps feel like a real threat. The thing is, using fictional mutation of real life fungi to create the zombie-like clickers was important. That was unique, in fact, to The Last of Us. Also, we don't know at any point during the game how the outbreak began. So the entire story is very important to understand that. To change it to something else with some scientific merit. Are you just ripping off Skynet, where they adapted a newer movie, later on from the original trilogy, to include smartphones instead for Skynet. Anyone remember that tragedy? Yeah. Well, this isn't far behind. Stop deviating from the source material, the very material that makes it popular and successful in the first place to make a show that will be, again, shockingly shite. Why? Because you have insulted the fans. 
The Resident Evil Halo Rings of Power shows are tragic, genuinely tragic. Whether it be a lack of chemistry, a lack of knowledge, or a lack of enthusiasm for the project itself. Please stop insulting the fans who love this so much. Also, you can try and make something that won't look anywhere near as good as the cutscenes from the games.